today we're going to go over your throwout bearing. This is used for the temporary pressing of your pressure plate so your clutch just can slip and then you can engage gears by disengaging this shaft. When you release it back in, pressure is relief off your pressure plate and clutch is engaged again making contact. This is now moving the entire car. But what we're looking at the problem here is I have three eighths of an inch space here and a half inch here. So we're an eighth inch out of center on this and it needs to be corrected. So this still has an original, I don't even know if they're original, but the aluminum cross shaft bushing. We're gonna change that with a bronze bushing. I picked up this bushing kit from the Bad Arfro buggy locally in town. It comes with a new spring for the arm and you have two circlips, one for locking in your spacers on the interior and the one for locking in your arm on the exterior. And this is the bronze bushing. It comes pre-drilled. So once you put your set screw in it, it has depth set and everything. And it gives you the bushing for the opposite end of the cross shaft if that part is worn out. I, I have rarely changed these because usually the transmission's in good shape. Someone just didn't center the bearing. So we're gonna check it out. If I need to replace that, we'll go in a little more depth on that. On my installs, I always safety wire your throwout bearings in. So our first step is gonna to be to cut that safety wire and remove it. That's a trick I learned from Russell at Old Speed. Loop it through, go around back in the arm, put your safety wire out here, a little spindle. I've never lost one since I've done that. I get myself a 90 degree pick. It's a pretty stout one. I'm using it like a hook at this point, and I'm twisting downward. That's it. Get that sucker off of there. What you're doing is unhooking it from the back side there. You can take the same 90 degree hook here and pull that one off there. At this point, you'll have disconnected your clutch cable. I always use a pair of needle nose self-adjusting vice grips. They're very handy for making clutch adjustments really quick and also for removal. So that would be in there. You'd undo the wing nut, and out it comes. We're gonna get the spring off the arm so everything's not under tension. Small pry bar. You're gonna come in from the back side of it, in between the clutch arm and the spring, and you're gonna get that sucker out that way. Okay, you see how it's stuck in place? Bring it back a little bit, keep going, and you see it snaps right there. Now my arm is free here. So we got that circlip right there. I got a pair of 90 degree circlip. This is about especially tools we're gonna get in this operation. We got our two circles there for the clip. And all you're doing is you're going into those circles and this spreads it apart. That's out on the edge, there's a little lip that it sits in and it keeps this arm from just coming off. Usually them being smashed keeps it from coming off too. So I, sometimes I gotta hit that end with a file. You see that's just not pulling off like it should because it's just grooved, there's no indexer or nothing. It should just pull off, but unfortunately, when, sometimes when they're installed, people hit this with a hammer and then you got issues like this where it just doesn't pull off. So I'm gonna get a file, we're gonna hit that lip right there. So I can see it's a little deformed here, so that's where I'm gonna focus my file. And we're not going crazy, we're just trying to break whatever edge was given to it when someone had smashed it. How easily it came off. That one little smash was all that was holding it in. That's how easily it should come on and off. Spring is going to get replaced, so we're going to take that out of there. This will be reused. That dude just wants to be in this video. I'm in! That's going to be reused there. Back here we have a set screw that holds that bushing in place. It's an 11 millimeter. I get it with a ratchet. I 
to take it all the way out because we don't want to make sure that the indexing hole in our bronze bushing lines up with it when everything is good on this side of it. So remove it completely. You're going to see it's like an indexing bolt. It's shouldered on the tip of it where it goes into that bushing. We'll go look at these further on the table. Let me get everything out of here. Indexing screw is removed. Our throughout arm off the shaft is removed. Everything's taken off that side. We're going to pick it up to where these are above the input shaft of the transmission. You're going to slide it over, pull the bushing and everything off of it on this end, and that gives it just enough play to where it comes out of there. That's our shaft coming out. So here's some of the old and new parts together, and this is what blows me away. This whole kit's only thirteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. We're not breaking the bank on it. But look at the difference of what you're dealing with there. All right, this is an aluminum shell or whatever the heck shell it is with plastic bushings on the inside. And this is a stock one, so this is acceptable. But if I, I, I find these on Kennedy pressure plates and that there's a reason why they have trouble engaging in the gears because this is giving up the ghost. But this is the way to go. You get that, that nice thick bronze bushing. Once it's in there, it's gonna last 20 years, 30 years, hopefully some of that time frame. We're inspecting the bushing here. We're gonna test fit once we actually get the arm back in here and just see how much play is in it. I did notice this. Is that the one they gave me? There's play on it. I would assume once it's pressed in, maybe it compresses a little bit and that's where you get your tightness from, but there is play in the new bushing, so we're just going to compare to see how much play is in that actual transmission bushing there if it needs to be replaced. So we're putting the shaft back in just to check for play on the interior bushing. And you can see as I try to move it up and down, nothing. ever so slightly going over that edge you can see how nice it's starting to look now nice and flat I got a wire wheel here I got eye protection on and give it clean up now we'll have a new edge there again nice and smooth I don't feel anything if you slide that bronze bushing on, they're not plastic. If there's any burr on there, it's going to cut into that bushing. And as soon as I tried to dry fit on there, it wasn't going well, so that's why we did that. We're going to take the circlip off of this shaft and replace it with a new one. While I was wire wheeling, I did the whole surface. Because once again, we used to have a plastic bushing with all kinds of wear or, or space in it. We now have this bushing that's a much, much tighter fit. I mean, you can see that it doesn't actually go over it right away. So I may even need to scotch bright or, or sand that a little bit on the end until it goes on there. But first, we're gonna replace the circlip that goes on there. And this circlip holds all your spacing washers in place and doesn't allow the arm to go outward. So on the Eclipse like this, you put those two holes into it and now you have control of it with the tension you put on your hand is how far it opens up. Think about serviceability in the future. This may even rotate, but if I have a chance to set it up, I'm gonna put my two ears facing up, meaning when you're looking from transmission in, you'll have access to those circles. If you put it somewhere you can't get to it, you're going to have a lot of fun trying to spin that thing around if it doesn't spin easily. So, you can see we put it into that slit, and now it fits really nice and tight. You see how close those circles are to each other? It's a good tight fit right there. These were the original washers that were on it. We're going to put them back on. All right. 
now I've got to get this thing to where it just slips over it. I'm going to figure out where the issue is here. And it's feeling like this right here. That's where I'm slowing down. So I'm going to go play with that a little bit. What I'm going to do is basically just lightly hit it with a file on top of those teeth. Maybe knock them down just a hair. Because this feels smooth. I feel a little bit of a raised lip there. And right there. It's probably where the other bushing was starting to wear away. Oh yeah, you can feel it right there. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. Big groove right there. Alright, so we're going to have to play with that a little bit. If I had another shaft here right now, I'd change out the shaft to make my life easier, but I don't, and you probably won't either, so let's get that fixed. A little bit of sanding, a little bit of wire wheeling maybe, but I want this bronze bushing to go on, and I don't care if there's a little resistance, that's fine, but it can't be that much resistance. I can't even get it to drop on there. Piece of maroon scotch bright. I got my shaft here, just get a real good grip on it, and turn this end of it. Yeah, clean that makes it already it doesn't seem like much but we also don't need much like i said i want it to go on like a look at that almost got it already it was just a little bit of playing with that scotch bright all right so we got that to where it's on there it's not super loose because remember this is a bushing that holds that shaft in place but it rotates on it without any lubrication so i know we're good and i can take it on and off short side facing inward we go all the way down so we're happy with that Let's take it to the car now. Do yourself a favor. Take a Sharpie and mark center line down where that hole is. So as you're indexing in the transmission, you know which direction you should put it in since our grub screw is coming in from the back side. So before we return the actual shaft in there permanently, I take some Molly grease. And the reason why I use this is it's for extreme pressure. And I can't think of any more extreme pressure than these pivot points as it's trying to push in your pressure plate. I have a little acid brush inside there. I just poke a hole in the top to put it in there and boom. And you can put it wherever you need it. I'm not going to lubricate the exterior of that one because it has a bronze bushing going there. We'll, we will lubricate the shaft itself. So I apply a thin coat with the same brush to the end of that there. And now I'm gonna put it into the gearbox. Here's what you're gonna notice, if you put too much grease in there, it's like hydraulic, it wants to push it out. So make sure you work that sucker in there, let it get all the excess out until it just stays there on its own. You don't want that out with pressure in there. Should move nice and easy. Not a lot of play. We've got our bushing. We've got our line on it. So you can see that is the shaft. I misspoke earlier. We have long side inboard, short side outboard. I'll bring the camera over here to see if you guys can see what I see. There's a mirror. And I'm going on the back side of the transmission. I'll get your kids involved. So I'm looking and I can see that the hole is lined up partially. I'll get the rest without the camera here. But that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the hole in here and obviously there's a hole already indexed into that bushing. What we want to do is get our grub screw to hold it in place in the proper location. So we do that with a mirror. So I see it's lined up right now. My grub screw is going in to hold it into place. Now, we got our 
plug screw is not tightened down, so you see there's a little bit of movement because that's not officially tightened down onto it yet. So, that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure here to here to see if we've corrected the issue, or do I need to remove one of these spacers here? Why not? way there. It looks like an inch and three sixteenths that way. So we're going to pull it back out and take one of those spacers out. Check this beforehand so you don't have to do the job twice. And when I take that out of there, Instead of this thing being hard to the right, it'll have a little bit of float to it now because that arm's gonna always go that way because the outward pull from the spring. So it'll come and it'll space out. You'll see a little bit of space there. That's normal, that's allowed. Remove one of those spacers. lubricated there. I'm just going to right back in. Look at that. Even, even with not putting new stuff on there, it's still got hydraulic for a second there. I'm using these opened up to push that bushing in from the exterior. tightened up, you're not getting movement out of that bushing like we were before on this side. Make sure she's smooth. The next part to go on is the cup we took off earlier. <clears throat> the kit came with a new spring. So we always use a new spring. There's always a little bit of fun to put on there. A little bit of an adventure. When you're putting your clutch arm on, the cup side faces towards the engine, the flat side faces towards the back, don't get it wrong. This new spring is making that a little difficult because of how far open it is. I think we're going to do a little cheat here. I'm going to loosen this up. I know when I put it back in its proper location it's going to be set up. Let's get that over. We're going to put our e-clip onto it. Once again we're using the new e-clip that came with it. Star clip, I should say. You 
can reuse them in a pinch if they're in good shape. If they're not, replace them. So we'll have it on our tool. bronze bushing in there we got to get that spring back over but we do have our circlip on the end there and our new circlip and our one spacer that we needed there to get the center throughout shaft and then you got to make sure that this sucker moves because if you miss the index hole in this you'll crimp it to where this shaft will not move and when we need to move and the spring is going to snap it right back once we actually put it on there. So you got that spring just hanging out there. I'm going to take a tool and come around the back side of it. Oh, you son of a monkey. And that's it. We're going to install the throttle bearing now. And a little trick I do. I put a short screwdriver in it, push it back, and lock it in between here. Now what that did right there is it raised these arms up away from the back side there. So when I go to put this in place, it's easier for me to get the clips onto it. So I'm putting on a throttle bearing clip on straight shaft that's going to go in there and then I've made this little specialty screwdriver right there I put a little slot in it so I have control of that bottom See now that that is indexed into that groove that's on the back side of the throat shaft arm and that is holding it in place the throat bearing clip is holding it in place we've got our safety wire looped through we loop through the eyelid of the clip we're going on the back side of this arm and we're coming around to the front if you don't have safety wire pliers you can just twist this by hand if you wanted to but i have safety wire pliers so we're going to use the tool for it we got our safety wire pulled through 
pinch a connection point on both of them. Pull outward to make sure it's nice and tight. Safety wire pliers have a cutter on it. And then I just tuck that back. That way that can't come off, not even if you wanted to. The reason why you saw me work with that excess is because this piece was a little too big. We're going to make it do both sides. See how quick I can do it in real time. Might need to speed it up if it takes too long because sometimes it can be a real bear, but. Other times it goes smooth as silk. That time was pretty smooth. I'm just going to cross them over. Pull it to get the slack out of it. get this out of service mode you're gonna to want to hang on to this don't just let it fling back and then get it out of the way look at that real simple and easy it just relieves the pressure that's on that throwout shaft so we're all good there got safety wire there and there we know our bushing here is working and functioning correctly we have our nice new bronze bushing there Hopefully another couple decades of service out of this one.